John Corcoran. We're here at Retail X live again in Chicago, and I'm here with Zach Normandin, and he's from Iris Nova. And Zach, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So we're a direct-to-consumer beverage company. We sell uh, a portfolio of beverages direct-to-consumer uh, through a technology platform that we developed, which is all over text message. Um, so our first brand, Dirty Lemon, we launched in 2015, all via text message. And then we also have a retail component to our business called The Drug Store, which is uh, all enabled by the technology that we developed, uh, which runs the core business. This is fascinating, exclusively via text message. So That's tell right. me, how does that work? Where, where do the customers come from? Start, start from the beginning. So where are the customers? How do you find the customers that are interested in, in the products? So we, we started advertising originally on Facebook and Instagram. So we were using uh, digital customer channel or just digital acquisition channels to acquire customers. And um, we've shifted now to more traditional, uh, traditional advertising. Um, but yeah, still just text message. Uh, yeah, so the only way that consumers uh, can purchase our products direct from us is uh, is over text message. We do sell in uh, in some strategic wholesale uh, channels, so places like Soho House, Barry's Boot Camp, we're in a lot of hospitality type channels, but we look at those more as marketing uh, opportunities to you know, to allow customers the opportunity to buy a single bottle of, our, of one of our products. Okay, so this is really interesting. So. Um, you put an ad out there and it advertises your product and it says, text us at this number and then what happens next? Yeah, so the way it works is we have uh, what would uh, you know what would be viewed as a, a traditional e-commerce backend, but what happens when you place your first order is it connects your phone number to uh, a customer profile. So anytime that you wanna reorder the product in the future, you just send us a text message, your account gets pulled up on our back end, and then you have all the information there, or the customer service rep has all the information to process the order. So it's as simple as saying, I want a case of X beverage, um, you know, and then the order is processed, and then we're delivering same day or next day in every US market. Um, so we're at very, very fast deliveries. Our goal this year is to actually beat Amazon Prime uh, on shipping speeds. And, um, and then a frictionless ordering process that allows customers to order at their own pace uh, without having to wait in a line or you know, deal with any, you know, a lot of the friction points that, that, that happen in traditional retail. So why not allow people to buy through a website or Amazon or something like that? Why only via text message? So if you look at the history of the beverage industry, um, the beverage industry started uh, really in, in pharmacies. So pharmacists would prescribe uh, carbonated drinks to to their uh, their clients or their customers um, based on their different varying needs. And what we've built is a system that's bringing um, the industry back to uh, you know its roots and um, that personal connection, that one-on-one -on -one connection that the brand owner has with the consumer. We think is very important. And I think if you look at over the last hundred years, um, with the addition of distributors and brokers and retailers into the mix. Um, you know, brands have, have gotten farther and farther away from their customers. And um, we're looking to bring it back and, you know, through that process, build a data set around consumption behavior in the beverage space and use technology to better, you know, inform our decisions around new brands that we're launching, how consumers are accessing the products, et cetera. Um, yeah, because we think that the industry is changing dramatically and, you know, consumers are coming to expect that they're going to have products delivered to their homes. Um, the data around this is, is, is staggering. It, you know, almost 70% of, con of millennial consumers um, by 2021 will be purchasing all of their groceries online, which is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we want to take advantage of that and build infrastructure that supports, just like Coca-Cola and Pepsi, we want to have a portfolio of brands underneath one parent company um, and then have uh, data on purchasing behavior and consumption behavior that allows us to provide them a better experience. Is the plan to continue developing your own brands or is the plan to um, you know, provide the technology to other brands? Yeah, so uh, you know, we started with uh, a brand of our own and we will continue to create other brands that we own fully. But we just announced over the last couple of days that we're gonna be investing $100 million over the next three to five years in emerging beverage brands. So the portfolio will consist of both brands that we own fully and then brands that we're also um, that we're investing in uh, minority stakes in, into companies and then allowing that uh, the technology to be a value add for our investment. Mm. So what other changes are you seeing in the retail e-commerce landscape that are affecting consumer behavior right now? So I think in large part, consumers are desensitized to uh, to brands. I think that consumers are very transient in their in their 
you know, their, uh, their purchasing decisions. And uh, the reason why is because there's a lot of brands and there's a lot of options out there for them. Um, so I think that, you know, brands need to do a lot to stand out. And um, also, you know, with the rise of direct consumer brands that are trying to bypass retail, um, you know, the marketplace has become very cluttered, uh, you know, to acquire customers and acquire them at a reasonable price. Um, you know, so we think by pooling data at one level and um, giving a portfolio of like-minded brands all access to that data, um, you know, with the, with the sole intention of providing the customer a better experience, that we can, um, you know, that we can bypass uh, a lot of those challenges and struggles that, that brands are having now to achieve scale. So the idea is dominate beverages first and move to other categories. Yeah, we're very focused on beverages. So uh, non-alcoholic beverages are expected to be a two trillion dollar industry um, in the next three years, and um, you know, those, that of that total, it's largely held by Coca-Cola and Pepsi, and um, you know, so the beverage industry is an incredibly, uh, you know, there's an incredible opportunity there to do something disruptive in the industry and to really challenge the the standards that have been established by the larger players. And um, but the technology that we've built um, doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily unique to beverage. I mean, there's a lot of other commodity products that could be purchased in the same way. Um, you know, I think one thing that conversation doesn't allow for is, uh, you know, extreme variability in products. So I'm not expecting that people will ever buy cars over text message or even clothing. I think that people want to see photos and actually be able to touch and you know learn more about the product. Um, but for for products that are high velocity and that are um, a little bit more frequent, you know, frequent use. Um, this is an, an incredible uh, means to connect with consumers and, and enable a, a, a very fast transaction. So in, in terms of right now, what amount of the communication, the conversation is human? What amount is AI powered? And also in the future, how, do you, how far do you see that going in terms of implementing AI into those conversations? So about half of the conversations right now are handled by a, a very robust bot that we've developed over the years. We purchased a company last year, it was named uh, the world's best chatbot. And we purchased that company and we rolled their technology into our, uh, our system. And, um, and then on the other side of that, we have 24 seven live customer service. So customers, um, if they say something or if they ask a question that falls outside of the logic that we created for the bot, that conversation gets pushed to live customer service, and then a customer service rep will handle that conversation. Got it. Um, do, is, do you see that ramping up over time, Does it, or has it ramped up over time, in uh, terms of the I, percent of AI versus percent of human? I think as our natural language processing continues to improve, um, I don't see there being a significant spike uh, beyond that 50-50 split uh, between conversations that are handled by the system and then conversations that are handled by, um, you know, by a rep. Um, but I think, you know, ultimately for the customers that, uh, you know, that, that just, that know exactly what they want and they just want to complete the purchase, um, you know, the bot enables them to do that with, you know, very, very fast mm -hmm. in just a couple text messages. Um, for anyone else, if you have other questions, you know, it, it gets, it gets uh, obviously pushed to a live customer service rep. And, you know, we think that, um, you know, that, that combination of both is, is probably the way that customer service is going to scale uh, across um, a variety of, uh, you know, cu customer service in, in the messaging space will, will likely uh, happen like that. I don't think it'll ever be 100% bots uh, replying to customers. Um, because, you know, the way that we communicate over these, these platforms changes too, or is changing. You know, people use emojis, they use abbreviated words, and, you know, incorporating all of those, uh, you know, into our, our language base uh, for processing different requests, it becomes very complicated. So, um, you know, there's, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, a series of, of keywords and different things that we can use to to prompt the customer to uh, to go down that that path of the the more simplistic, uh, you know, bot driven approach. But we have, uh, you know, we have uh, an alternative way if they, you know, if they follow outside of that. So. What else are you excited about or, or keeping your eye on in terms of changes in the um, you know commerce e commerce landscape uh, in the years ahead? Um, it's a very interesting time to be building a brand and to be, you know, this, if you look at, you know, CPG and the entire retail landscape, um, you know, it's dominated by a lot of sleepy legacy players that have been doing the same thing for a very long time. And I think this is the first time that brands really do have advantage to um, challenge those systems. And so we're just looking at, you know, 
really across the board, you know, any new technology is not only happening here in the States, but we're looking at other international markets where, you know, there's unique ways of selling or, um, you know, other adjacent industries. I think the fashion industry and the beauty industry are both, you know, years ahead of where the beverage and food and beverage space is right now um, in the way that they, you know, develop new products, the way that they're using data to inform their decisions around products that they're launching. Um, we're just trying to be really open-minded about the industry because there really is no playbook for the next three to five years. Um, and I think that if you look, you know, in the past, you know, a lot of big brands that were built were all following the same playbook that, you know, that um, other brands before them had followed. Um, but it, it, it's really changing. It's changing too fast now where that doesn't exist. Zach, uh, Iris Nova is the name of the company. Dirty Lemon is the name of the product. Where else can people learn about you? Uh, so irisnova.com is the website uh, or dirtylemon.com. Really interesting what you guys are doing. Thank you. We're going to be continuing to do interviews all day here from RetailX in Chicago. Thanks so much.